Oompa Loompa Doopity Do. We're going to talk about Roll Doll, Netflix. Uh, Netflix bought the Roll Doll company. Roll Doll, of course, being the the author of such classics as Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, James and the Giant Peach, Matilda, and so many other beloved children's books. Uh, lots of changes are coming. Of course they are. Of course they are, because it's 2023, and we can't have anything nice, right? So we're going to talk about all these changes coming to World Doll books and the outrage on both sides. Uh, I think it's stupid personally, but um, here we go, guys. This is Neon. I'm not here with Geeky Sparkle. She's sitting this one out. Uh, I used to be an avid reader of World Doll books back in the day, as many kids were. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm somehow not surprised. I was like, of course they are. I mean, they, they came for Dr. Seuss, you know, and now they're going to make changes to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. They're going to make changes to Matilda, um, some of his other books. So let's let's talk about the changes, and then we'll talk about the reaction. Uh, before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Almost, almost uh, 295,000, almost 300,000 subs. Greatly appreciated. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you. Uh, we are trying to get to 300 grand. 300 grand. Um, so if you could help us out, make sure you're still subscribed. Uh, so this is coming from ABC News. God, this is this is <laughs> welcome. Welcome to Moronic Monday, guys. Uh, critics reject changes to Roald Dahl books as censorship. Critics are accusing the British publisher of Roald Dahl's classic children's books of censorship after it removed colorful language from works such as Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Matilda to make them more acceptable to modern readers. You know what the colorful language was? Augustus Gloop is fat. He can't be called fat, but he is fat. Have, have you seen the movie? Both movies, he was fat. Critics are accusing <laughs> critics are accusing the British publisher of Roald Dahl's classic children's books of censorship after it removed colorful language from works such as Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Matilda to make them more acceptable to modern readers. A review of new edition of uh, new editions of Dahl's books are now available in bookstores, and it shows that some passages relating to weight, mental health, gender, and race were altered. The changes made by Puffin Books, a division of Penguin Random House, first reported by the Daily Telegraph. Augustus Gloop, Charlie's gluttonous antagonist in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which originally was published in 1964, is no longer enormously fat, just enormous. He's very tall. He's like uh, Big Jack Horner now, right? <laughs> in the new edition of Witches, a supernatural female posing as an ordinary woman may be working as a top scientist or running a business instead of a cashier in a supermarket or typing letters for a businessman. Gotta be progressive. The word black was removed from the description of the terrible tractors in 1970s, The Fabulous Mr. Fox. The machines are now simply murderous, brutal-looking monsters. Uh, Booker Prize winning author Simon Rushdie was among those who reacted angrily to the rewriting of Dahl's words. I hope he doesn't get doesn't get attacked again for that. Rushdie lived in hiding for years after Iran's Grand Ayatollah uh, Khomeini in 1989 issued a fatwa calling for his death because of the alleged blasphemy in his novel The Satanic Verses. And yeah, I mean it never it never ended for him, did it? I mean he got he got attacked. Was it last year or the year before? I mean, we were talking years and years and years later. Um, yeah, last year. Last year in an event in New York. Uh, Roald Dahl was no angel, but this absurd censorship, Puffin Books and the Dahl Estate should be ashamed. I think Netflix factor, personal opinion. But they allowed Dave Chappelle to do whatever he wants, so I don't know. The changes to Dahl's books mark the latest skirmish in a debate over cultural sensitivity. Never let sensitivity readers read old stuff because they're going to find they're going to find something to be offended about. Are they going to go through uh, Laura Ingalls? I think they already have. Haven't they gone through and tried to censor Little House in the Prairie? I think they've tried to. Um, anyway, uh, campaigners are seeking to protect young people from cultural, ethnic and gender stereotypes in literature and other media. Critics complain revision revisionists revisions to suit 21st century sensibilities risks undermining the genius of great artists and preventing readers from confronting the world as it is. The Roald Dull Story Company, which controls the rights to the books, which apparently was acquired, acquired by Netflix. So this is what happens when Netflix buys your company. 
uh, said it worked with Puffin to review the text because it wanted to ensure that Dahl's wonderful stories and characters continue to be enjoyed by all children today. The language was reviewed in partnership with Inclusive Minds, a collective which is working to make children's literature more inclusive and accessible. Any changes were small and carefully considered. So is Augustus Gloop going to have like an eight pack now? Is he going to be shredded? Like if you eat nothing but candy and sugar all day, are you going to be shredded? It said the analysis started in 2020. Oh, before Netflix bought the Roald Dull Story Company and embarked on plans to produce a new generation of films based on authors' books. Well, that's just it. We can't call Augustus Gloop a fat ass on Netflix in in 2023 can we when publishing new print runs of books written years ago it's not unusual to review the language used alongside updating other details including the book's cover and page layout the company said our guiding principle throughout has been to maintain storylines characters and the irreverence and sharp edge spirit of the original text but no fat jokes puffin didn't immediately respond to requests for comment Dahl died in 1990 at 74 his books have sold more than 300 million copies they've been translated into 68 languages and continue to be read by children around the world he's also controversial because of anti-semitic comments made throughout his life the Dahl family apologized in 2020 saying it recognized the lasting and understandable hurt caused by his anti-semitic statements um and what were they exactly did they mention that I don't know. He might have. He, he, he may have. I don't know. I, I actually, I don't know. Uh, regardless of his personal failings, fans of Dahl's books celebrate his use of sometimes dark language that taps into the fears of children as well as their sense of fun. Well, there's not going to be much more fun in World Dahl. Uh, Pen America, a community of some 7,500 writers that advocates for freedom of expression, said it was alarmed by reports of the changes to Dahl's books. If we start down the path of trying to correct for perceived slights instead of allowing readers to receive and react to books as written, we risk distorting the work of great authors and clouding the essential lens that literature offers on society. I agree. Uh, you know, here's the thing. You have to, I mean, this is the same mentality behind banning, you know, Song of the South. Like, I think people would understand that that movie was made many, many years ago. In fact, it's actually a very tame movie. In fact, it's not terribly offensive. Um, you know, it's not ideal current year. Obviously, it would never get made current year or even 20 or 30 years ago. But it is a product of its time. And I think most people understand, hey, these books were written in the 50s, 60s, 70s. They're products of their time, right? And I don't know. Again, this is what happens when you hire sensitivity readers because they're always looking for something to be offended offended over um the editors of puffin should be ashamed this is laura hackett a childhood doll fan who is the deputy literary editor of london's sunday times sunday times the editors at puffin should be ashamed of the botched surgery they've carried out on some of the finest children's literature in britain she wrote as for me i'll be carefully stowing away my old original copies of doll's stories so that one day my children can enjoy them in their full nasty colorful glory yeah, Augustus Gloop is, is no longer fat now. This is ridiculous. Sensitivity readers were hired to scrutinize the text coming from the Telegraph. Oh, my God. Uh, the Oompa Loompas are no longer tiny, titchy, or no higher than my knee, but merely small. Once they were small men, they're now small people. Now, to be fair, um, and uh, I saw Vito brought this up too. The Oompa Loompas originally were were caricatures of of natives, and then they made them orange skin. So they've look. They, there has been objectively, there has been some revisionist history on Dull's work already, and I think they changed their skin tone. I think it was around the time they were getting ready to make a movie. But a lot of people they don't like it. They don't like it. Same with Dr. Seuss. We're banning Dr. Seuss. Just say, hey, this book was written in like 1950 something. And back in 1950-something, this is what they thought. You don't have to pull the book out of print. Explain it to kids. Actually, it could be a, a fantastic teachable moment. Say, look how far we've come. Look how far we've come, kids, that we don't uh, stereotype people like this. But no, we can't do that. We can't have, we can't have rolled dull books uh, unedited in the kids' library. Instead, they can have, uh, what was that one book teaching kids like sex and stuff? I'm like, what the hell? They, they do. They've got... Saw it on Twitter. There's a, there's a book out there with like cartoon drawings of people doing it. 
We can put that in kids' libraries, but we can't call Augustus Gloop fat. You know, <laughs> it's like, what the hell? Passages not written by Dahl have also been added. Oh, that's bad. In the witches, a paragraph explained that witches are bald beneath their wigs ends with the new line. There are plenty of other reasons why women might wear wigs, and there is certainly nothing wrong with that. What the fuck? Now you're adding to what the hell? Not that there's anything wrong with that. Augustus Gloop was enormously fat. Not that there's anything wrong with that. He's healthy at any size. <laughs> this is beyond parody. In previous editions of James and the Giant Peach, the centipede sings. Aunt Sponge was terrifically fat and tremendously flabby at that, and Aunt Spiker was thin as a wire and dry as a bone, only drier. Vaginal dryness is a problem. It is a problem. There's, there's medication for that. Both verses have been removed, and in their place are the underwhelming rhymes, Aunt Sponge was a nasty old brute and deserved to be squashed by the fruit, and Aunt Spiker was much of the same and deserves half of the blame. References to female characters have disappeared. Miss Trunchbull and Matilda, once a most formidable female, is now a most formidable woman. What? Boys and girls has, oh my God, seriously? Boys and girls has been turned into children. What the hell is this? What the hell is this? This is the same thing they're doing at Disney. The cloud men in James and the Giant Peach have become cloud people. And Fantastic Mr. Fox's three sons have become daughters? Wait, seriously? Are you effing kidding me? What? Matilda reads Jane Austen rather than Rudyard Kipling. Is this a parody? What? This is the Telegraph, right? Holy shit. Matilda reads Jane Austen rather than Rudyard Kipling because he's problematic. And a witch posing as a cashier in a supermarket now works as a top scientist. Mr. Twit's fearful ugliness is reduced to ugliness. While Mrs. Hoppy, uh, Mrs. Hoppy is not an attractive middle-aged lady, but a kindly middle-aged lady because middle-aged ladies can't be attractive. One of Dahl's most popular lines from the Twits is, you can have a wonky nose and a crooked mouth and a double chin and stick out teeth, but if you have good thoughts, they will shine out of your face like sunbeams has been edited to take out the double chin because, you know, fat. Because fat. An emphasis on mental health has led to the removal of crazy and mad, which Dahl used frequently in comic fashion. Uh, God. Uh, a mention of, a mention in SEO Trot of Taurus as being backward, the joke behind the book's title has been excised. The words black and white have been removed. Characters no longer turn white with fear. And the big friendly giant in the BFG cannot wear a black cloak. What the hell? What the actual hell? The changes were made by the publisher Puffin and the Roald Dahl Story Company, now owned by Netflix. Well, they're saying it. Yeah, it's owned by Netflix. With sensitivity readers hired to scrutinize the text. This is why you never hire sensitivity readers. They're going to always look for something to be outraged about. The review began in 2020. And they said it was still run by Dahl. Well, it began 2020, but I think it probably escalated under Netflix. Uh, sensitivities over Dahl's stories were heightened when a 2020 Hollywood version of The Witches led to a backlash over its depiction of the Grand Witch, played by Anne Hathaway with fingers missing from each hand. That's I remember that vaguely. I forgot they even made a, a remake of uh, The Witches because I remember the Angelica Houston version from the 80s, and it was actually pretty okay. But yeah, so... For those of you who don't remember because she was missing fingers, uh, people said that it was ableist that, uh, you know, because the bad guys didn't have fingers. Really, it was just the way the witches, because they had different physiology from humans. They were not human. They were witches, inhuman witches. I'm surprised the Wiccan community didn't. I'm sure they did. I'm sure lots of protests uh, were to be had. <laughs> Warner was forced to make an apology. Nobody forced them to make an apology. After Paralympians and Charity said it was offensive to the limb difference community. That same year, the Dahl family and the company apologized for the author's past anti-Semitic statements. Again, I want to, well, I don't know if I could, even if I found them, I don't think I could read them on YouTube. I, I'm not, I'll have to look into that. I, I, again, I can't say one way or the other if he did make those statements. Uh, Matthew Dennison, Dahl's biographer, said that the author who died in 1990 chose his vocabulary with care. I'm almost certain he would have recognized the alterations to his novels 
prompted by the political climate were driven by adults rather than children. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is ridiculous. This is why we can't have nice things. This is why academia needs to be held accountable. You know, again, you can literally have books in libraries that depict graphic acts. And there are multiple instances of this, but you can't call somebody fat. You can't call somebody fat, but you can show somebody have sex in a book in a children's library. Go figure. I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.